Hello, Winston. Hey, how's it going? Good, I'm just trying to get this huh? glove on. Uh, Ichida. Huh. My glove has been giving me trouble on this trip, as you know. Yeah, come forward. Come forward. Emma? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm getting out of the way is a lovely You're telling lady. me to go forward and you're in my way. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a thorn in my side for far too long. You're in my way. What are we... Uh, uh, we're talking about the foreign price. Right. Have you heard about this concept of the foreign price? Yeah, I call it the uh, vanilla face McDonald's price. Yes. If you're white or a foreigner, yeah. then you're going to get charged differently for everything in China. Yeah. But I that. guess. No, okay. It's actually it's quite insulting to be honest. But as a foreigner, you are very often overcharged in China. Mm-hmm. How says it, yeah? And it's, inc pin, pin. it's incredibly common. I thought we'd talk about some of the of the um, situations that we've been in. Why is your seat dripping water out of it? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> what? It's probably from the rain. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, let's talk about the times it's happened to us. Okay. Because I think it's quite relevant. So I'll tell you about the first time it happened to me. Whoops. That sucks. This bloody bike. I really can't get my glove on. This is okay. getting bad. Keep, keep, keep getting your glove on. Let's go. Okay. I'll work it on. Okay, so when I first got to China, mm -hmm. um, I was in Shenzhen. I went to this place called Dongmen. Okay. Ooh. Nice brakes, dude. <laughs> I don't get this intersection, there's no I know, it's weird, traffic eh? light or I don't know what you're supposed to do anyway. Whew, yeah, it's a breeze, guys, it is so hot. Okay, so <laughs> back to the story. So I get to this um this market. Mm -hmm. It's called Dongmen and it's a walking street and you know it's actually pretty well known that you're supposed to bargain there, right? Right. Okay. So I went into a shop and I wanted to buy a beanie. Okay. Alright because it was winter okay and I was like I need I need a, a warm hat I don't normally right. wear beanies and stuff right but I really right. wanted one right so I'm going in there to buy a beanie so I went and I asked how much for this beanie mm -hmm. and they were like 80 RMB okay and you know for a foreigner you think that's that's a little pricey but it's reasonable you know right got to turn left right over here for some reason shit yeah probably let me know ahead of time next time yeah sorry about that <laughs> um, so I was like, 80 RMB, that's a bit much. Um, and then, someone else in the shop, like a lady who could speak English, which was kind of weird. Because uh -huh. I think she's probably from Hong Kong or something like that. Oh, okay. She said to me, like, no, that, that's too much. Right. And so she said, it should only cost 20. Right. And I was like, well, really? Because you're so used to taking things at face value overseas. Right, right, right. And so she, as she was telling me this, the shopkeeper got like incredibly angry with her. Right. It was like, how dare you, you know, I couldn't understand what they were saying, but it was pretty much a tone. I could figure out that she was seriously pissed off and the look on her face. Anyway, I just walked out and, you know, that was my first experience of this. Uh, can you share yours? Yes. Um, I was in Iwu, which is the building I call in China that you can buy everything ever made in China. Okay. <coughs> Imagine every trinket piece of trash little made in China thing you've ever seen it's in this building right right like 20 floors of this crap anyway I was buying uh, candy to okay. bring home for for family and friends and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. I mean it's always nice you can get a grab bag of all those weird things like Da Bai Tu and all those very traditional yeah, Chinese yeah. things and they make good gifts so I was gonna bring them home look at that English mass every yeah, Sunday Anyway, long story short, I, I go in there and I'm picking out candy and I'm following the prices mm -hmm. on the thing, right? And yeah. apparently you're supposed to bargain in this place as well, okay. even though there's like price tags and stuff, right? So I'm picking out this and picking out this and picking out this and this nice woman, yeah, she was like, when, when we were ringing out, she was in the same line as me. She was like, no, you're the one bag should cost this much, like a flat rate, not like they're weighing at all this crap and doing all this math on the calculator. Yeah. And the woman, she was like, why are you helping? Why are you helping him? Like the woman behind the counter said to the other woman, why are you helping him? Yeah. Right? Because I think she was pissed off that she was losing money. Yeah, of Because, course. you know, the woman is trying to help me out. And, like, I feel like she's 
she saw me I'm like a foreigner doesn't speak very good Chinese she just wanted to help out and I was getting the foreigner price because I didn't bargain and they were trying to rip me off and charge yeah. me more and it's just a common thing in China Gotta go but down it goes further tunnel. than that but it says no motorbikes Okay, and we go up up here, I guess. Sorry, it is very common, and it was actually it was incredibly frustrating to the point where I used to do little experiments. Uh -huh. um, I'd get my girlfriend to go into a shop before me and ask a price of something. Of course, that's like a thing you'll learn. Yeah, so I'd be like, okay, can you find out how much it's gonna cost for that T-shirt or whatever, right? Right. And then I uh, guess we can't go there. Gotta Dude, go down what here. The it's okay. It'll reroute us. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then they they tell her oh, it'll be 15 RMB and then I walk in there and suddenly it's 120 you know right right um, and it was quite a bloody common thing but you know what else is very common <laughs> is I've had uh, girlfriends and my wife actually pretty much attacked by shop owners not right. not like attacked physically, physically but yeah. verbally right saying like you are a traitor to China right. you know for right. helping this foreigner they literally say that they say right. you know and they, I can't even know, remember what the word for traitor is, but they literally call them a traitor. Like, you know, right. why are you helping this foreigner? You should be helping our Chinese, you know? Right. Um, so the foreigner price is very, very, very real, dude. It is. And um, this leads me on to what happened um, very recently. Oh, not very recently, a couple months ago now. Um, where there was a college in Wuxi. Mm -hmm. And uh, the college dorms. Basically, you have, uh, you know, obviously the or whatever, uh, it's where the college students stay. It's like any, any other place. Right. And they moved a bunch of Chinese students out of uh, specific dorms to make way for the foreign students. Mm -hmm. And of course, there were big riots. They were like, how dare you, you know, like, um, treat us like that, you know? Right. I can understand why they're pissed off. Right. Because apparently the dorms were nicer than the ones the, the Chinese students were moved into. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, turn left over here, then we should be able to rejoin the big road. Um, anyway, the thing is, one thing that people don't seem to realize... Oh, look, it's a night market. Oh, yeah. That's where we were. That's one night. thing people don't seem to realize is the fact that when I studied in the Shenzhen University, mm -hmm. the price for the foreigners was about 9,000 RMB a semester. Right. And the price for the, the Chinese students was... 2,500 RMB a semester. Right. So, you know, the thing is, the foreigners are paying way more, right? Right. So, I think it's fair that they get the better dorms, don't you? Obviously. I mean, if you're going to be paying t 10 times the price, I've seen some of the tuitions actually are 10 times higher Yeah. in some of the more prestigious universities because foreigners can't pass the Gaokao to get in and pay the normal prices, right? Sure. So, you go to a nice university in China, it's actually not very expensive if you're a Chinese person that was qualified to get in. But as a foreigner, as a foreign exchange student, of course you're going to be paying a lot of money, right? In comparison, so wouldn't you expect that you'd get a better service in terms of like living standards? Number two, Chinese people, I hate to say this, sounds unfair, but are a lot more used to living in a crappy dorm. And so if they're going to pay less money... I suppose so. Yeah. No, they are. They absolutely yeah. are. You've yeah. seen their dorms. Yeah, you know? you're right. You're right. And I feel like this, the standard of living is quite a bit lower. Mm. So you, you're a, a dude coming over from England or whatever, or France or whatever, and you're studying, and you're probably, you're willing to pay more for a better environment. Sure. Bit, right? Sure. So I understand that. I don't think it's racially motivated. I think it's money motivated. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I just want people to realize that this, this foreigner price thing is a very real phenomenon in China. Right, right. And being such a homogenous society, it is always a us versus them kind of idea. Of course. Of course. You know what I mean? So be aware of that. Never accept the first price. Get no. your Chinese friend to, to ask the price for you first. And they'll help you out. They're happy to do that. And you know what I find funny is that that woman said to you, Sasha, Yeah. like, why are you a traitor? Yeah. Sasha's more directly influenced or affected by you saving money than her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you're her husband. They just don't get that though, do they? Right. It, it's a sad state of affairs, but for years now, literally, if I want to buy something from a market, I will stand outside. Careful, there's a car right next to you. Right, because um, you'll never get the I, price. Yeah, I will stand outside and I will tell my wife, hey, I'm interested in buying XYZ, and she'll go in and get it for me because if I show my foreign face in there, the price suddenly doubles or triples or whatever. It know? obviously depends on where you are. If you go to like Uniqlo or something, no, buy a shirt, it's fine. But I'm saying in market. Like yeah, Vivi will let me know. She's like, this place, stand outside. Like, I'll go get it. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Silly, silly. Yeah, I guess that's it, really. So, uh, is there anything you would like to tell our subscribers before we sign off for today? Whether you like to pay more money than little locals for whatever. <laughs> I don't even know what that means or no. not. Um, what do you think? 
Go down below in your country, where you're from. Do you charge people different prices based on where they're from? Or are you a nice equal society? Uh, like the video if you did, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, and if you like storm clouds looming up ahead or not, Don't talk about we those. love you all the same. <laughs> oh, gosh. So until next time, you know the draw. As always, stay awesome. Don't forget, every single Monday, another ADV China video right here, same time, same place. On Wednesday, you can check out Laowa 86, 1 p.m. EST. And Friday, just in time for a beer going, check me out on my channel, Serpent ZA.